minha casa, maninho, minha casa tem duas portas, uma que abre, outra I'm going to be trying more Brazilian sweets for you. Like you requested, since I made the first video, which you can watch here, I was fortunate enough to receive a package of a bunch of different things to try from a friend of a friend who came from Curitiba, which is in the state of Paraná in the south of Brazil. So thank you, Vinicius and family, and let's get started. The first thing that I have actually comes from nearby Curitiba itself, from the town of Antonina, which you can see right here on the package. These are balas de banana. Bala in Brazilian Portuguese just means candy in the sense of a sugary confection that we know it in English. So this literally translates to banana candy. They come individually wrapped in a classic style packaging. The paper itself is very old timey and there's a little picture of a banana. It's very cute. When you pick them up, they have a little bit of give in your fingers right away. So it's not a hard candy. As an American, we often think of Brazil as being the land of like tropical everything and where they grow coffee and chocolate. And definitely bananas make up part of that image that we have. So a candy like this on the face of it is not that surprising, except that I have never had or heard of that many Brazilian candies that are banana flavors. So I don't have another reference to go off of in terms of expectations for this one. So it is very surprisingly dark. It is covered in sugar and it looks like it is a scorched sugar candy. So that's quite interesting. I was expecting something very yellow and artificial looking. And it's not artificial at all. The inside is just the same as the outside. It is a very natural banana flavor. It tastes basically just like they took some mashed up bananas and reduced them in a caramelized sugar mixture. I would say that it has a very like homemade candy taste to it. So I could see this being something that's quite nostalgic for people that are in the region. The next thing I have is dadinho. And dadinho gets its name from the Portuguese word for dice. When you take one out of the package, you can see why, because they're little cubes and they're in just the shape of a die. There seem to be a lot of peanut candies in Brazil. So if any of you Brazilians want to tell me about your peanut affinity, please feel free to do so in the comments below. This one is darker than the other peanut candies that I tried in my other video. It is pretty hard, but still kind of fudge-like in texture. It's creamier and gummier than the pasaka that I had in the other video, but it's very similar in texture and a little bit similar in taste. I would say that this is a little bit more diluted in terms of the peanut flavor, but it's still pretty good. To round out the peanut theme, I have pasoquita, which is a classic Brazilian treat. This is another version of pasaka, and it comes in these little mini packages. It's kind of a compacted, crushed up peanut candy. The difference is, it's very crumbly. And the texture of the pasoquita is very airy. It's very light and fluffy. And you can see why it crumbles because it's there's not a lot holding it together. It also has a bit stronger of a peanut flavor. You can taste kind of the salt and the peanuts together in it. So this is a little bit better in terms of flavor, but I would say I like the pasoca texture better. Not bad. One of the things brought to me is something that's not unfamiliar to Americans, which is dos de leche, which in American culture is widely known by its Spanish name, dulce de leche, which is a product that is made of condensed milk, basically caramelized. We have this by way of Mexico, but this is present in all Latin American countries as well as Spain and Portugal, which is where it came from. There are only small differences by country, so it really just depends on what you're used to or what your preferences are. I love dulce de leche, and it's really good when you eat it with things like cheese or on toast. It, it, it kind of goes with everything, I think. So this is dos de leche from the south of Brazil. So let's try this one. It has a strong, creamy flavor to it. The things that set these apart from each other often is the strength of the flavor, so this is great. Save the most curious one for last. This is Geleia de Mokuta. Mokuta in European Portuguese would also be known as Mão de Vaca. And if you don't know what Mão de Vaca means, it means cow's foot. Mokuta is basically a soup that's made using literal cow's feet. It's a very Brazilian kind of a dish, and it's normally hearty, but it can also be made into this sweet spread. The sweet spread isn't made with the meaty or fleshy parts of the cow's hoof. It's made with the protein and fat. They boil it down and then they mix it with other sweeter ingredients like sugar and often cinnamon and other things like that. It smells kind of like feet. I cut off a chunk of it. It is quite hard. It is very firm and doesn't give very much. It's not like a marmalade spread that you might find in the same kind of format. So. Despite the texture, the taste is actually pretty good. It's interesting because it doesn't really have much of a flavor of its own. You can taste a little bit of the cinnamon that's in it, and you can definitely taste the sugar that's in it. It basically just tastes like a cinnamon gelatin. Like, it doesn't have a specific taste of its own. And I guess that's to be expected given what it's made of, but it definitely doesn't match the smell that it has, so that's quite surprising. It's interesting. I don't know if I would get this habitually, like, on my own. It's worth trying. And that's all I have for this part one of trying more Brazilian sweets. I will have a part two 
two where I try Brazilian chocolate coming up quite soon, so be on the lookout for that. If you like this kind of video and you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel and maybe think about liking this video as well. I also have a podcast that comes out every Monday on iTunes that is called Bottom of the Mainstream, which you can check out, and I will see you next time.